Today is the global summit against violent extremism where youth from all over the world are here in New York to talk about our different projects and to learn from others. It's a marketplace and a melting pot of youth activists from 54 countries. It's a fantastic joy and honor to welcome all of you to the first ever Global Youth Summit Against Violent Extremism. This is a historic event and an opportunity to highlight all the remarkable work that young people are doing. The tremendous initiatives that all of you bring here will all contribute greatly to building a worldwide movement that rejects extremist ideology and practice. They're giving us the opportunity to really engage our peers so that we can take this upon ourselves because this is our fight too. And I come from a very uh, small district in Pakistan and I have the opportunity to meet these people and maybe I can use some of their mechanisms in my own community. Coming here and meeting other people who do the same thing differently it was a great chance for me personally to learn from them and see how I can implement a different program in my country. We've got a section of today which is a marketplace where all the young people can exhibit all the different projects that they've done. Timok Renaissance is a platform whose mission is to use culture and the arts to combat against violent extremism. If you're a musician and you want to record music in decent conditions, you can come to our center. If you're an artist and you need some tools and training, you can come to our center. We try to create entrepreneurial opportunities for young people who have been displaced in their states and in their families. I'm an ex-extremist myself. We go around in Norway visiting high schools and talking about radicalization, talking about the process, to connect with them on a human level and to show them that we are actually there to help them, to be there for them. I came on behalf of Inspiring American Muslim Youth, which is an organization that works to inspire American Muslims by teaching them about their identity as Americans and as Muslims and kind of really integrating them into society. My name is Abdul Samad Shabrawi. Uh, from Morocco. Hip Hop Family is a big music organization in Morocco. We found out the best thing to give the people message is by song. Spending my time doing the hard work. work. Spending my time just to get my music works. You are always first. You won't get nervous. I wouldn't do it. I was born in a community where uh, violence and insecurity was all of the day. Today I serve as a youth ambassador for my country to the common world. We are trying to use our capacity to influence other young people to become peer educators in the peace building process. ISIS tweets about 90,000 times a day recruiting uh, young people all around the world and the counter tweets to that is almost negligible. So what I'm calling for is social media campaigns that pull them away from violent extremism and get them to take on the initiative to do these campaigns themselves. So you have government sponsorship in the form of the State Department, then you have two NGOs, one being Counter Extremism Project, joining forces to kind of bring together the best and the brightest from across the counter extremism spectrum to offer solutions. There's financing and grants available to scale up and highlight those practitioners that we think are doing the best work. I am committing the State Department for $100,000 prizes and rewards for these counter violent extremism innovation projects. Your projects will be part of the competition. Youth are the first people that are affected by extremism. It's their friends that are being recruited, it's them that are being recruited. How a tiny bunch of extremists are hijacking the religion and the country. It hurts my identity being a Pakistani. It hurts my identity being a Muslim. So for me, it became a very personal war of ideas against the extremism. President Obama says this is a generational struggle, but it's your generation that will solve it. People in East Africa normally doesn't come to the decision-making table. So on the initiative that we are proposing, we wanted to bring young East African leaders together to talk about some of the common challenges that they face and also to share a good practice and what can be done. There is more resources. I, I would personally put that resources into empowering young people. So when you get the 100 delegates that you want to get, how will you keep them safe once they come back? Like similar that we did with the, with the previous conference in, in Istanbul. We tried to contact with local authorities to ensure they do a regular checks on those individuals. In countries like Pakistan, where 65% of the population is below 32, we have a huge youth bulge. Youth not only tend to be the first victims of extremist violence, they also tend to be the perpetrators. If you have young practitioners, young adults who are offering solutions and who are communicating with people from their same age group, I think it's much more viable. I don't think you can do countering violent extremism without the implementation and participation of young people. We need to be a part of the solution and be seen as a part of the solution. We can engage together to counter violent extremism and ensure sustainable peace.